Hello again, I'm Lost, and today I'm going to show you about conf.lua. So in the previous episode, we only put two different options into conf.lua. Today we're going to put them all in. We're going to copy it out of the wiki. So I've already shown you a little bit about the wiki. If we go back into the main page of the wiki, you can pop down here to wiki navigation. The quickest way to see what goes into the config file is to click config files in the middle here. Scroll down a little bit to the current configuration file. You can just double check that you're running the same version. So we know we're running 0.10.0 and we can just copy this entire section. It's all got uh, really helpful comments so you understand what each option does and what kind of variable each option takes. So it could be a Boolean, could be a number, or it could be a string like in version, or I think what we were using was hmm, t.title. I'm surprised that worked. So I was actually supposed to say t.window.title, um, but the love developers have obviously set up a bit of redundancy. So if you just write t.title, it understands that it's t.window.title. So that's pretty cool of them. Now we're gonna go into conf.lua and just paste over the entire thing. Now we can go back up to the top here and we're going to change that again to hello world because why not we are going to turn console back on we're going to save that so now we're back to where we were everything else uh, all these other options are in their default state when we didn't specify them previously they were exactly how it currently is this is all defaults if you don't specify something it just reverts the default so now I'm going to run you through a lot of the things that exist in conf.lua and what they do. And I might do it top to bottom, I might jump around a bit. Um, hopefully I'll make some sense. So the first thing that jumps out to me is the version number. And the version number is actually a not the end of the world if it's not right. I'll show you what happens. We're going to change version to 0.9.0. If I run this now, it'll tell me that the game I'm running was made for version 0.9.0 and that my current installation is 0.10.0, so there may be some incompatibilities. Now, this is not version 1.0, right? This is not a finished product. Uh, and as such, compatibility can break for various functions um, at various updates. And everything that changes is detailed in the wiki. So if you find something's not working, one of your functions causes an error in a new version of love when it didn't in the previous one, you can jump into the wiki, look for that function, and there should be information about what's changed and exactly which versions it changed in. So it's very helpful for that. So you can click OK and it'll continue to run the game the same way it would before. Um, previously it actually prevented you from running the game, so I like this change a lot. Identity. Uh, Identity is use, used for save files. So a lot of games have save files. Um, and if you don't use save files, your game is probably an arcade game. And the whole point of arcade games was you come in, you play the game, maybe your information is saved in a high score table, but originally maybe not, right? Pong doesn't need a high score table because you're playing against a friend. You either beat them or you don't. Um, so identity is useful for if your game has saving functions. This is the only way to save games from within love. And you don't get to just save to any file on someone's computer. Love has safety features built in so that you can only save to what's called an app data folder. So I'll show you how to find that. It's percent app data, percent. I don't know if it needs to be all caps. I don't think so. And what will happen is there'll be a love folder created in here when data is saved. And within the love folder will be a subfolder called whatever string you put in here. So we could call that hello world. I wouldn't put a space in it, it's not necessary. And look, we probably won't be able to show you this in action. Running this now won't create this folder, only saving data will. So, but we're going to do that anyway, just for fun, why not? Um, so we'll move down a bit further. Console either will happen or won't. One of the things about your games is if you package your game um, and you know you, you can sell these games. Part of the license of Love 2D allows you to sell these games. All profit goes to you. The developers don't want to retain any rights to the game you create. It's um it's a really uh, I'm gonna say pro indie sort of game engine. 
Um, if you ship your game, if you put a finished product out there that has a console of true, then when people run the game, they're gonna see the console. Now that's not normal for games. Generally speaking, you won't want someone who's playing your game to see what's happening in the console. Um, so if you're gonna ship your game or you're gonna show it to off to other people, because um, you think it's in a state where everything works nicely, you're probably gonna turn the console off so you can change that to false. Um, and as you can see, that's Windows only. Um, in, in Mac or in Linux, if you wanna see the console, you have to run it from the console. Um, now, we run it from the console in this tutorial series anyway, so you're kind of always gonna see the console, but uh, that's not a big deal. All right, accelerometer joystick I've never used, but it's a new one, it's a new option, because in 0.10.0, the developers have been working really hard to add support for mobile platforms, including iOS and Android. So it enables the accelerometer by exposing it as a joystick. So there's always been joystick compatibility, there's always been keyboard and mouse compatibility, but now they've enabled the use of the accelerometer, which is the thing that picks up whether you're tilting your phone or, or your tablet, um, and that can be used as a joystick. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you don't ever plan to ship your game to mobile devices, you can turn it off. You don't need to. If you find that turning it off has performance benefits for your game, uh, go ahead and turn it off. I don't think it ever will, unless you specifically enable things further. So. A lot of these things you actually won't need to touch. Gamma correction, when supported by the system. So again, is that something you need to touch? Probably not, but you might find you do. So let's go into the window options. There's a lot of things you wanna change about your window. The title, the icon. You can provide an icon in the form of a picture file. And the picture file should not be a .ico file. It should not be an icon file. I've tried that. It doesn't have support for that. It has support for things like PNG, I assume bitmap and JPEG, and all the, all the regular formats for images. Window width and height, if I run this now, you can see the width is 800, the height is 600, it's not square. If I change the width and height to, I'm gonna say 500, save that and run it, you can now see it's smaller and it's square. Uh, borderless, I'm gonna show you what that does, but it's not something you're probably gonna to wanna to use. You might, you might not. Depends what kind of thing you're, you're creating. Um, one thing you can't do now is close it easily. There's no close button. You can make your game listen for when someone presses the escape button or when they click on a, an exit button, that'll close the game. That's pretty easy to do. I'll show you how to do that at some point. Um, but borderless, I wouldn't recommend unless you really, really need it for, I don't know, immersion factors. Um, generally speaking, you won't want it. Resizable is something you might want. It's generally not something you'll use for a game, but if you're using it, if you're using Love Today to create a kind of graphical application, you might want your window to be resizable. Resizing things adds a huge layer of complexity, um, so I wouldn't recommend it, but there are libraries that you can use to handle that complexity for you, make life a lot easier. But I will show you exactly how that works. I can't type true today, it keeps coming out as tour. I'm gonna set the min width and min height to 200 because one and one isn't quite possible. Uh, what am I doing? I don't need that open. So we'll play this here. We can now resize things off the screen even. And we've gone to the minimum 200 by 200. It actually doesn't get a lot smaller. When these buttons encroach into the space that the icon is taking, uh, it actually stops resizing at that point. It doesn't get any smaller. So I think the minimum width is maybe slightly more than 100. And the minimum height, I think, is 100. So full screen is false. Uh, I'm not gonna turn that on, because it's not particularly easy to close things when they're in full screen. And look, the way I'm recording this, I'm not sure what'll happen if I alt F4, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, there are two different types of full screen. There's desktop full screen and exclusive full screen. Um, that's basically to do with how things are rendered on screen. So that's one of those things you might worry about way down the track when you're worried about uh, kind of the finishing touches of your game. V-Sync, you're generally want to, gonna wanna use V-Sync. V-Sync means that it, the game doesn't try to draw more frames on screen than the refresh rate of your monitor. So most monitors in the past have been 60 frames per second or 60 Hertz. Um, 
but these days you can get monitors that display a lot more at, at a higher hertz you know things like 144 hertz um, so v-sync is generally something you want to leave on on the odd occasion you might not um, but generally speaking you'll leave it on msaa is a form of anti-aliasing i wouldn't recommend you touch that until you know more about what you're doing i don't particularly know exactly how it affects things but I know it has an effect on smoothing pixels, is generally what anti-aliasing is for. Window display shows the monitor to show the window in. So unfortunately in this setup here, my virtual machine only has one monitor, so I can't show you what it's like if I put it on monitor number two. Um, but if you've got two monitors, three monitors, uh, if you, when you're running your game, you want it to only launch on a certain monitor, you can change that. But this is something you'd want to change for yourself, not for a person who's going to play your game. It could be quite annoying for people if they've got two monitors, they've got one of them set as a main monitor, one of them set as a uh, second monitor, and you've set window display to two, and it's always displaying on the second monitor. That could annoy them. So generally speaking, if you're shipping a game, you probably want this on one. High DPI is something that's useful for, I'm going to say laptops mostly. Um, but Retina Display is something that's uh, an Apple technology. Um, and basically all it means is lots of pixels displayed on a square inch of your screen. Um, and, and all the main manufacturers can do that. Only Apple calls it Retina Display. Um, and obviously enabling support for high DPI is something that's kind of, you might specifically do it for an iPad game. You might do it for an iPhone game. I don't know if it's effective on Android or not. I've never tried it t.window.x and y. This will actually tell you where on screen the game happens to launch. So you notice it launches by default right in the middle. If we set this to 50 and 50, uh, put num lock on, 50, 50, save and run, you notice it's just in from the top of the screen. So actually the part that is at 50 comma 50 is the top left here. It's not the window bounds, it's the bounds inside the window. So you can see that here. Draw a diagonal line through here. That's nice and good. Draw a line through here to here. It's not diagonal. It should be a diagonal line because 50, 50, you know, 50 across 50 down, that's diagonal. All right, try and avoid beating a dead horse on that one. Doesn't need all that explanation. Now we're diving into the modules section. So you can actually enable and disable various modules within the Love game engine. Generally speaking, you leave everything enabled. Every now and then you might want to disable something mostly for a, uh, I'm going to say, debugging and bug testing scenario. So if you find that audio is possibly causing things not to work nicely, you can just turn it off by changing true to false. Um, what else? I mean, maybe you just disable things that you aren't using, but generally speaking, I would recommend just leave everything on unless you specifically need to change things. Like for example, changing the timer module by disabling it will result in zero delta time in love.update, which will break almost every possible thing you could possibly do in Love2D. Like uh, almost nothing will work at all. And that'll be explained further in episode, I wanna say episode seven. Um, so that is conf.lua. These are all the things you can change. Mostly you don't wanna to change too many things. You might change window width and height. Most people might wanna change that unless you're going specifically for a full screen game, in which case you're gonna to wanna to change full screen. Um, generally speaking, you don't want your window title to be untitled. Generally speaking, you want your version to be the version you've created the game in. Your identity should be closely tied to the name of your game. It's not your author name, it's the name of your game. Console should be true when you're making your game, but you should turn it to false if you're shipping your game or if you're giving somebody a copy of it. Well, that's, that's someone who doesn't know what the console is. If, if the person you're giving, you know, your testing copy of the game to knows about consoles, go ahead, let them see the console. Um, yeah, most other things. You're probably not gonna mess with this. You probably don't wanna mess with borderless. Um, so that's about it. You know, most of these things you're only really gonna touch later on in the game development cycle. So that was conf.lua, the configuration file. And thanks for watching.